Nick and Danny Rick, two Red Bull drivers that are all over the headlines of Formula One at the moment. And with the rumours circulating around the possibility of the Aussie replacing the Dutchman, it just seems so simple. An excellent driver, a not so excellent driver, surely you just swap them. Well, of course, it's Formula One, so it's slightly more complicated than that. So let's break it down and look into why it's not quite time yet to get rid of Nick DeVries. And even if it was, why Daniel Ricciardo is not going to be the driver to replace him. Let's start off with Nick DeVries, who is still signed to that Alpha Tauri seat for the 2023 season alongside Yuki Tsunoda, of course, replacing Pierre Gasly after last season. And many thought it was going to be a really close battle between the Japanese driver and the Dutchman. But instead, Nick DeVries has had close to the worst start of a season that I think you could ask for. Like, he hasn't impressed in any aspect. His one lap pace has been bad. His race pace has been bad. His wheel to wheel racecraft has been bad, which has translated to him being bottom of the driver's championship and only one of two drivers not yet to score any points this season, the other driver down there being fellow rookie Logan Sargent. It would be the standard thing here to compare Nick to Yuki as teammates and in the same car. However, Yuki has stepped up so much this season. I actually think when you look at Yuki in the championship, he's only in 16th place on two points. I don't think that's actually reflective of how good he has performed in these first five races. So I think the two Alpha Tauri drivers are just not comparable this season. Yuki is just on another planet compared to Nick DeVries. So instead, I want to compare Nick to Logan as the two drivers yet to score points, as I think we can actually then use Logan as a case study to emphasize just how bad Nick has been. If we just outright look at their results, they've actually been fairly comparable. Both have had their best finish in Bahrain. Both have had comings together with the barriers in Baku recently, although Nick DeVries did do that twice. And both have smashed into the back of cars off of the start line. Logan actually hit Nick in Australia and Nick hitting into Lando Norris, a little bit softer, but in Miami still. So the two have been pretty comparable. So why is nobody talking about Logan Sargent being the worst driver on the grid? For me, it's down to the expectation that was built before the season even started. DeVries is not your normal rookie in his early 20s that is coming through this rough and raw talent that still needs to be shaped. He's 28 years old, which makes him the eighth oldest driver on the grid. He's three years older than the likes of Russell, Leclerc, Verstappen. He's six years older than his teammate Yuki Tsunoda. Of course, he is coming into his first season in Formula One, but he's already so experienced and has won championships in other series, namely Formula Two and Formula E, which are also single seater championships comparable to Formula One. So everybody brings that up. But even more importantly, in my opinion, he has been working with Mercedes Formula One behind the scenes for years. He has tested so many Formula One cars numerous times, and I'm sure has put in hundreds of hours in the Mercedes simulator too. Plus, of course, that drive in Monza last year, where he turned from that driver that every Mercedes power team just throws in for an FP1 session as a safe pair of hands and to keep Toto Wolf happy, to one of the hottest prospects available. Like a surprise call up from Williams on a weekend where, again, as to my point, he was actually helping out Aston Martin. He took that opportunity and made the most out of it, taking clear Clearly the slowest car on the grid to a ninth place finish, scoring points in a Williams, I think is the biggest factor that played into him getting a Formula One seat, but the expectation that came from that could also be the biggest factor in him losing it. He even said himself that he doesn't want to be classified as a rookie, even though it's his first season in the sport because of his previous experience. So he put himself under that extra pressure. He added the extra expectation before he'd even got into an Alpha Tauri car. That means when you take everything into account, De Vries has felt like the worst of the three rookies by a big margin, even if his results are similar to Logan, because Logan is 22, hasn't won championships, has only been linked to Williams for a couple of years. Of course, I'm not saying that Logan can't improve. I'm not saying that we can't look at Logan crashing into the back of De Vries in Australia and clipping the wall in Baku during the sprint quality and expect more from him. Of course we can, but he's only 22. There's more time for that raw talent to show itself and those mistakes to be buffed out, his mistakes are much more understandable than a 28-year-old Nick DeVries. This underperformance on expectations so far this season has led to the discussion around him being replaced. And I mean, it doesn't help that he's also in a Red Bull seat because we all know how trigger-happy Helmut Marco can be. Just because you've got a contract for 2023 doesn't mean you'll actually have that seat for the 2023 season. Like, we've seen when you race for Red Bull, your Formula 1 career can disappear basically as quickly as it started. And on top of that, it really does 
doesn't help that the rumours are of a fan favourite driver in Daniel Ricciardo possibly making his way back onto the Formula 1 grid much more quickly than expected as your replacement. Whilst we're mentioning him, let's pivot to Danny Rick as I also want to discuss the reality of him replacing Nick De Vries. Recently, there have been reports of Daniel Ricciardo having a seat fitting in Fienza in Italy, which is where Alpha Tauri's factory is located. Obviously, as soon as everybody heard this, everybody thought, well, he's having a seat fitting. Surely that means he's taking the seat of Nick De Vries. I know the Formula One community is very excited about having a driver like Daniel Ricciardo back. Like, he is a fan favourite, not only because of his great personality, but also because in the right car, he is absolutely electric to watch go wheel to wheel. But I think the excitement is shrouding the reality a little bit, which is Daniel Ricciardo is just not coming back yet. He doesn't want that Alpha Tauri seat. And it's actually, as I've been writing this, been confirmed by Helmut Marco, who has now ruled it out. Daniel has, of course, said many times that his Formula One career is not over for him yet. He even spoke in Miami about how he's driving the RB19 at Silverstone after the Grand Prix weekend think he said for a Pirelli tyre test and how he's hoping to show the kind of pace that he's capable of to try and catch the eye of a team for the 2024 season. And I for one am also very interested to see what kind of pace he has considering he's had to get rid of a few of those bad habits that he picked up at McLaren in the words of Christian Horner and especially because I do think that his drop in performance whilst at McLaren was because of the car and the different driving style that he could never quite click with if he has been able to get into a comfortable position with this Red Bull car even if it is just on the simulator, how close he's then able to translate that to Perez's times or maybe even Verstappen's times around Silverstone will be very interesting. That felt like a little bit of a tangent, but getting back to replacing Nick De Vries and the seat fitting headlines that have been everywhere, unfortunately, it's just standard practice as Daniel is also a reserve driver option for Alpha Tauri because of his role with Red Bull, and therefore it had nothing to do with replacing Nick. In fact, Helmut Marco has come out recently and made it clear that if Nick De Vries were to be moved on, their young pool of talent would be the main priority, specifically naming Liam Lawson and Ayumu Iwasa. Probably heard of Liam Lawson because he's been in and around Formula One for a little while now. He's had a few tests and a few free practice runouts, but he's currently racing in Super Formula where he sits in third in the championship. And actually he won on his debut. So that was absolutely incredible. Whereas Ayumu Iwasa is a slightly newer name to most Formula One fans. He's currently in his second season of Formula Two. I think they both are definitely Formula One prospects. I could see both of them getting into Formula One at some point. If I had to choose right now, it would be Liam Lawson, but come the end of the season, it might be very close between the two of them for that Alpha Tauri seat. Because of these talents that are starting to come through again at Red Bull, I just can't see Daniel Ricciardo coming back anytime soon, especially in a Red Bull related capacity anyway. As disappointing as it might be to say, do we really want to see Daniel Ricciardo in one of the worst cars on the grid? Like after everything that he's done before, I think it makes a lot more sense to throw in a rookie alongside an on-fire Yuki Tsunoda and have another Red Bull talent on the grid because there's a lot of them and they're all pretty good. Of course, we all want to see Daniel Ricciardo give him one last shot, especially at a big team. But I think if you go through it, Red Bull might want to swap him in for Checo, but Perez would have to do something crazy. Hamilton would have to retire for him to get in at Mercedes. Ferrari assorted. He could go in as a stroll replacement at Aston if you could somehow talk Lawrence into sacking his own son. Or I think, you know, it's one last roll of the dice from maybe an Alpine if they can get their act together and be slightly faster and offer Daniel Ricciardo a slightly faster package. I think it's just quite hard to see where Daniel Ricciardo actually slots in, especially if he's looking for a seat for next season. I'm hopeful, but not convinced. The performances of Nick De Vries have certainly got the silly season rumor mill up and running already this season, and I cannot wait for them to be in full swing come the summer break, when there will undoubtedly be another mad driver swap that nobody was expecting. Like, that's just what Formula One does best at this point, and maybe by then we'll be able to see where Daniel Ricciardo will slot himself in. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts on Nick and Danny Rick in the comments down below, and I also just wanted to take a second just to say thank you so much for all of your comments comments recently. I know I've been trying quite a few new things on the channel this season and trying to work out a format that I'm happy with and looking to the future of the channel will work out and your support just means the world to me at this moment in time. If this was your first video, check out another one. I'll even link one in the description down below for you. Whilst you're down there, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you next time.